Our final challenge is figuring out how to represent signed integers. For example, what should be our representation for the number minus 2000? In decimal notation, the convention is to precede the number with a plus or minus to indicate whether it's positive or negative, usually omitting the plus to simplify the notation for positive numbers. We could adopt a similar notation, called signed magnitude, in binary by allocating a separate bit at the front of the binary string to indicate the sign, say 0 for positive numbers and 1 for negative numbers. So the signed magnitude representation for negative 2000 would be an initial 1 to indicate a negative number, followed by the representation for 2000, as described on the previous two slides. However, there are some complications in using a signed magnitude representation. There are two possible binary representations for 0, positive 0 and negative 0. This makes the encoding slightly inefficient. But more importantly, the circuitry for doing addition of signed magnitude numbers is different than the circuitry for doing subtraction. Of course, we're used to that. In elementary school, we learned one technique for addition and another for subtraction. To keep the circuitry simple, most modern digital systems use the two's complement binary representation for signed numbers. In this representation, the higher bit of an n-bit two's complement number has a negative weight, as shown in the figure. Thus, all negative numbers have a 1 in the high order bit, and in that sense, the higher order bit is serving as the sign bit. If it's 1, the represented number is negative. The most negative n bit number has a 1 bit in the high order position, representing the value minus 2 to the n minus 1. The most positive n bit number has a 0 in the negative weight high order bit, and 1's for all the positive weight bits, representing the value 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. This gives us the range of possible values. For example, in an 8-bit 2's complement representation, the most negative number is minus 2 to the 7th, which is negative 128, and the most positive number is 2 to the 7th minus 1, or 127. If all n bits are 1, think of that as the sum of the most negative number with the most positive number. In other words, minus 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1, which equals minus 1. And of course, if all n bits are 0, that's the unique representation of 0. Let's see what happens when we add the n bit values for negative 1 and 1, keeping an n bit answer. In the rightmost column, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. In the second column, the carry of 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0, carry the 1, and so on. The result is all zeros, the representation for zero. Perfect! Notice that we just used ordinary binary addition, even when one or both of the operands are negative. Two's complement is perfect for n-bit arithmetic. To compute b minus a, we can just use addition and compute b plus negative a. So now we just need to figure out the two's complement representation for negative a, given the two's complement representation for a. Well, we know that a plus negative a equals 0, and using the example above, we can rewrite 0 as 1 plus negative 1. Reorganizing terms, we see that negative a equals 1 plus the quantity negative 1 minus a. As we saw above, the two's complement representation for negative 1 is all 1 bits, so we can write that subtraction as all 1's minus the individual bits of a, a sub 0, a sub 1, up to a sub n minus 1. If a particular bit a sub i is 0, then 1 minus a sub i is 1. And if a sub i is 1, then 1 minus a sub i is 0. So in each column, the result is the bitwise complement of a sub i, which we'll write using the C language bitwise complement operator tilde. So we see that negative a equals the bitwise complement of a plus 1. Ta-da! To practice your skill with two's complement, try your hand at the following exercises. All you need to remember is how to do binary addition and two's complement negation, which is bitwise complement and add one.